Hi there. How's it going? I'm Truth Seeker. This is the Truth Seeker Podcast. Excited, delighted again to be with you guys for another awesome episode. We'll talk about all things spiritual. It's what we do. Got some things planned, some things that I want to speak on, some things that are near and dear to my heart right now. And um, so I'm going to talk about some stuff here in a little bit. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, I, I do have a guest coming on today. The guest will be uh, probably in the second hour. So hang around for the guest. Uh, there was a time zone issue. And so about an hour in, I believe my guest is going to come on and join me. So make sure if you want to catch the guest, she will be here, uh, Alicia. So make sure you hang out uh, for that. It's going to be good. Um, I want to say a huge thank you to everybody supporting my work via Patreon. This podcast doesn't exist without your help and your financial support. So thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. It means the world. I um, want to give a shout out to some of the latest patrons within the last week or so. Shout out to Keith. What up, Keith? Thanks for coming on, man. Blessings to you. Shout out to Monica Underwood, which is my new friend. Uh, thanks for, for coming on as well and joining us on the Thursday night class this last week. It was really good. Great to meet you, my friend. And uh, Realm Seer 12. Thank you guys for believing in the work and coming on and joining our community. Uh, if you'd like to support, head on over to patreon.com backslash truthseeker. Uh, there you get access to my entire discography of music, which is 200 plus songs. Uh, if certain levels get you access to all of my guided meditations and some of the interactive things that I've created on that end. So if that interests you, instead of buying them individually, you get access to them all there, kind of like uh, at a certain p uh, tier and a bunch of other stuff as well. You get access to our Thursday night School of the Mystics, which is um, the community aspect to what we're building. And let me say, too, that it's, that shouldn't be scary to join because there's a lot of people who are hesitant to join. Maybe even the name of it, the School of the Mystics or that it's a school or or something like that or like, a you know, sometimes we do courses together. That's something that we do. But um most of the time, we, we just open up and have discussion. What are you going through? Are there questions? Uh, maybe there's other people who have been through similar experiences. And so we just kind of share our stories. And uh, people are going through stuff throughout the week. And you need prayer. You just need to get it off your chest. Kind of exists for that um, purpose as well. So don't don't be scared or overwhelmed. I hear that a lot. People are like, I finally joined. And I'm so glad I did. And I was so hesitant. So for those of you who are, are thinking about it, make sure you... you uh, hang out with us on Thursday nights. It's really, really good. So we tap into that, uh, tap into the prophetic abilities, which I'm definitely huge into and, um, you know, learning how God is speaking to us and through us on a daily basis and having a safe zone where we can try some of those things out. And it's been phenomenal. It's been amazing. Uh, people doing it for the first time, you know, God's been speaking, but it's about being quiet, being still and listening how he's speaking to and through us again. So make sure you check that out. Patreon.com backslash Truthseeker. Also, my book is here. If you haven't had a chance to pick up a copy, check it out. But I think the, the main thing that I'm just wanting to push right now, at least for this episode, um, because the feedback has already been amazing, right? Um, something I've talked about on the podcast, like I wanted to, um, I talked about doing it as a dream or whatever, something that I wanted to do, but I know there's like a huge budget to make it happen and I don't have the budget to do something like that. There's these videos going around where people are helping homeless people. They're going up to a random homeless person who's someone who was down on their luck and they're just, they're really blessing them, taking them out to eat, buying them a new wardrobe. I mean, 
taking care of their needs and just really showing up and just telling them, you know, letting them know that not just telling them, it's one thing to tell them, but it's the, another thing to show them that you're not alone, that there's people who believe in you, there's people who love you and, uh, and just really, uh, bless their socks off. So I, um, wanted to, uh, to put that out there and do a video like that and, um, didn't have the budget to do it. And I've been talking about them in it. So I was like, you know what, let me just put it out there. Let me put the idea out there and not really put too much emphasis on it or marketing or whatever the case is. Let me just put it out there. Let people know that this is something that I want to do. And uh, and for those of you who would like to support, you know, you have the ability to do that. So um, I put I did the video Saturday, which was like, what, three days ago. And I just did a little video and I'll, I'll play the video here in a second and just asked for support. So, hey, if this is something that you would like to see happen. And uh, I'm going to give everyone who donates a shout out in the video. And we're going to go out there and really bless someone's socks off, man, just to let them know that they're not alone. And uh, so I put it out there on a GoFundMe and see who wanted to support. And people came out the woodwork already. And it's only been three days. And I haven't even talked about it on the podcast. So I want to make sure that I mention it here. And I know, like, I think we're almost halfway to the goal. The goal is... Uh, that I put for all the budget is around thirteen hundred dollars, and we've already raised over five hundred dollars. So I'm I'm already blown away as how fast is this thing? I thought it was gonna be like set it and forget it, just kind of have it there, mention it every now and then, and over a couple months we'll be able to raise the money and then go out there and and, and maybe do the video if it's something that people wanted to see. So did the video, put it out there, raised over five hundred bucks. Uh, to go out and do this video for this budget. And if you want to see it, make sure that you donate. Uh, the link is in, uh, well, it's not in this description, but you can go to my GoFundMe. You can go to truthseeker.com and it's there to give. But I'm going to go ahead and play this video for those of you guys, those of you who haven't seen it, and those of you who are listening on the podcast, and you'll get a little bit more info as well. And I'm going to come back and talk a little bit more about this. But I do got some stuff I want to get into as well. It's going to be deep. Make sure you hang around. But check out, check out this quick video. Yo. Not that video. It's a different video. Let's see. I got to find it. Oh, Lord. I thought I just had the video up. This is embarrassing. Let's see. All right. You guys going to have to give me a second. I'm sorry. I'm so embarrassed right now that I didn't have this video pulled up. So it will it will come really quick. Just give me one second. I swear. Let's see here on the back end. There it is. Hey, what's up? Here it Got is. This new video idea that I want to see coming to fruition, and I Wait. need your help to make it happen. Not yet. Almost. And uh, shout out to uh, all of the um, people in the chat holding it down. I know there's a lot of people watching right now on many different uh, platforms. So uh, shout out to you guys, and shout out to the moderators too, who kind of keep the chat under control like you guys have the ability to block people mute people put them in timeout as needed and it seems like it's needed right now so make sure you go ahead and do that let's see here i want to um i got to make sure the audio is going to play on this video um one second guys let me know if you can hear the audio i'm not sure hey what's up got this new video idea that I want to see coming to fruition and I need your help to make it happen. What we're wanting to do is we want to go out and we want to find a random homeless person, someone down on their luck, and we want to take them and give them a total. Hey, what's up? Got this new video idea that I there want to see coming to fruition and I need your help to make it happen. What we're wanting to do is we want to go out and we want to find a random homeless person, someone down on their luck, and we want to take them and give them a total makeover help them get on their feet if this person wants to get a job it'll be a perfect springboard a kickstarter for them to go out there and do that so what we want to do is find this random homeless person we want to take them get them cleaned up get them a hotel for three nights uh, get them a clean shaven haircut shower warm bed to sleep in all of this stuff we want to take them out to a five-star restaurant. We want to put some money in their pocket. We want to take them and buy them a new wardrobe. All of these things. But we just really want to bless their socks off, man. It, again, it would be the perfect springboard to if they want to get off the streets, if they want to get a job. No excuses. And uh, at the end of the day, we really just want to let this person know that they're not forgotten about. People love them. God loves them. And people believe in them. So if this is something, a video that you want to see, 
coming to fruition. I don't have the budget to do it myself, so I'm asking for the money. If you want to see this happen, all of the suggested budgets are in the descriptions. And if you want to help, uh, make sure that you donate to this cause. Also, your names will be mentioned at the end of this video, so you will get a shout out for donating as well. So thank you guys for believing in this vision. If you want to see it happen, man, donate to the cause. This is just something that's been on my heart that I wanted to see happen. This has the ability to go viral and also has the ability to inspire others to go out there and do good works themselves, man. And that's really what it's about at the end of the day. Thanks for believing in the work and believing what we're bringing to the table. Thank you so much. God bless. And uh, go ahead and click that donation button. Any amount helps, man. Thank you, guys. All right, you heard the man. Any amount helps. So that's what we're wanting to do. And I just want to talk a little bit about that as well, because like, I don't know if I just didn't, um, I wasn't clear in the in the video enough um, about what it is and, and, and what the outcome will be. I, I think it sounds a little bit more like in, in the video that it's the, the goal is to get somebody and work with them and, and get them off the street, get them a job. You know, some people are insinuating, taking them to work taking them and, 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 you know, letting them live with me for a couple months and discipling. Them. That's not what that is. That's not what that is. It's a random act of kindness um, that, that we're, we're going to do to someone. And uh, the hopes is that they get off the streets, right? The hope is that, but at the same time, some people are comfortable on the streets. They're called to the streets. They want to live that way. They don't want to work a nine to five. That's how they survive. And if that's their case, it's not to like, hey, man, you need to sign up for corporate America, man. Get your butt out, get, get a job. That's not the thing. So if that's the case for the individual, we definitely want to help them for sure. But at the end of the day, um, it's it's just about blessing somebody. A rant, something that no matter where they are in life, whether if you, the things that we want to do, like they'll never forget that for the rest of their life. And, and hope and hopefully they'll pay it forward. I mean, most of us, that was like a random act of kindness or someone showed compassion to us and we, we wanted to pay it forward. Right. Our cup runneth over. So we want to help other people and, and knowing how blessings work. That's how it works. You get them, you give them out. And it's just a continual cycle into the world. And so if we're all doing that. It's the pay it forward deal. Right. So uh, we, we want to help other people. So that's definitely what it is. So there was just comments of like. I mean, I saw there's crazy comments. <laughs> there's comments like uh, don't don't help the homeless people. They don't care. They'll rob you. They're they're mean people and like generalizing like all homeless people as you know, which is not the case. Um, people are on the streets for different reasons. Against a lot of them are there by choice for sure. hundred percent. We've done so much homeless ministry over the years and we've been where they live. Maybe we'll go out to Tent City. They live in a city in the woods. It's insane. There's tree houses, there's um, animals and there's, man, they just get like plywood and they pick up boards and stuff out of the trash and off the streets and they bring it back to this area where they're living and they, uh, and they build. <laughs> it's really interesting. A buddy of mine, um, when we was dealing with the homeless ministry, he had all this extra food and uh, he brought it downtown in Mobile and wanted to to give it to the homeless because we had all this extra food that was going to go to waste. So he found a homeless guy at the store and said, hey, do you have someone we can give this food to? Or are there more people who could benefit uh, from this food? And it was I think it was like nine o'clock at night. And he's like, yeah, I definitely can get rid of it for you. And uh, he told him, you know, where he was. And he's like, yeah, we're staying back in the woods. He's like, there's a whole bunch of people. He's like, I'll take you back there. He's like, what? So he followed this guy. Uh, it was just an act of faith, right? He was, and I'll give a shout out to him because he was just like newly born again, right? He just want to help, just want to serve, just want to be Jesus. So he followed this homeless guy through the woods and you, he couldn't even see his hand in front of his face. It was so dark in the woods. Um, but he went back there and then, uh, it opened up and there's just all of these homeless people in the woods. It's like a city and they call it tent city. And he was like, he didn't even know that that existed. Like we've seen homeless people, you know, bagging or under the bridge or one or two here and there. Right. Um, but here in Mobile, like to know that there's like a little city where there's a community. They take care of each other. If they got food, they're going to feed each other. It's crazy. So he was able to see that. And so we started going back there, hanging out with the homeless people, bringing food, praying with them, leading Bible studies, um, and, and the funny thing is, like, my friend did let some homeless people come live with him. It didn't end up good. It didn't end out good. So I want to say that. 
uh, that per- people didn't want to leave. They didn't want to get a job. They just wanted to you know, live off of this guy in his house. You know, it didn't work out good that way. But uh, but yeah, so helping out somebody, man, they're out there, right? And so we just want to bless somebody, even if it's just taking that one person and that's all they do. Uh, and they don't do anything with it, right? Whatever the case is, they're blessed. They'll never forget it. I would never forget it. Some random person pick me up and spend money on me, take me out to eat, uh, you know, give me shelter, whatever, you know, everything that we plan on doing, a free haircut, you know, free shave, all of this kind of stuff, man. So that's that's the goal. It's just a bl- uh, just to bless someone. You know, I watch a lot of uh, Todd White videos, and anytime Todd White goes out to eat, like they blow the the, the people's minds with with a generous uh, tip. They don't just give five, ten dollars here, and not like the majority of Christendom who don't even tip, right? But they, uh, they he goes above and beyond so much so that it, it makes an impact on the person's life, and they don't they don't forget it. And those videos inspire, man. They inspire me, you know, to want to do that, to want to help somebody who is it to help somebody who can't help you, right? The person isn't gonna you know, go tell everybody or, or give you something in return. And so that's always the goal when, when trying to help somebody. And we do that random acts of kindness and, and not to film it and stuff like that. But this is something a little bit di- different because we want to film it. You know, the Bible says, don't let your right hand know what your left is doing. So why would you do a good deed and film it? There's all of these memes. And I'm going to do this as a PSA in the video, just so you guys know. We're going to definitely start the video off with, as a PSA. Don't film your good deeds, you know, and there's a lot of Christians who would say that they see the Todd White videos or they see the homeless makeover videos is essentially what we want to do. A homeless makeover video. We want to take care of them. We want to bless them. And uh, but the scripture says that let your light shine before all men. Let your good deeds do your good deeds in public. Let people see you doing your good deeds so they may in turn glorify your father in heaven. Um, especially because there's all these memes out about, you know, people taking selfies while they're handing the homeless person a dollar or whatever the case is, or doing all these good deeds and filming themselves, making sure the cameras are there, making sure they're in a good angle and all that kind of stuff. And people, people talk crap about it, you know, and they don't like it, but I tell you who didn't talk crap about it and who does like it, that homeless person, that homeless person doesn't care if you're filming it or not. Uh, that person that, that is in need and you're meeting the need that doesn't care. And, uh, you know, one thing about all of filming your deeds, there's all of these things that are going viral and I'm, I'm going to show, we're going to do a clips and montage and all this stuff. There's all types of challenge. There was one that went viral some time ago called the knockout challenge. Young people filming themselves, walking up to unsuspecting random people, hitting them with their best shot and seeing if they could knock them out a random person. There were people doing this to old ladies. People loved it. They were resharing it, retweeting it, making it popular. Other people was catching on. Other people would go out and do it. On the other hand, there's the new one that we're dealing with right now. It's, I don't know what they call it, the jump challenge or whatever. Someone jumps in the air and then their friends sweep their legs out from under them without them knowing and they fall on their back. Well, people are having concussions from this. Some people have already died because they're falling backward and hitting their head on the concrete. And at school, uh, some cheerleaders did it to some um, um, uh, a, a girl who was in special ed and filmed it and went viral. And now they're talking about pressing charges like it's crazy. This stuff, you're filming do yourself doing wickedness and it's going viral. It's catching on. Other people are doing it as a challenge. Well, I want to do it on the other end. We want to do something beautiful. We want to bless somebody. We want to go above and beyond and hope that that would catch on and other people would would do the same thing. Not to that level, right? And I don't think that's something that we could always continually do, but it's the small things that matter, man. It's the small things. Everybody doing something small. So whether you want to film it or not, you know, that's on you. Uh, And, you know, we filming it, man, it, it documents it, bro. There's some... There's some some uh, <clears throat> videos we have where we we were doing baptisms and stuff, man, and people giving their testimony and giving their lives to the Lord, and they're just being open about their story and where they came from, and it's a testimony to show others that what God has done for them, He can also do for you, right? When someone shares a testimony, so um, I want to do it and put it out there. We're raising the, the money now, so if if you feel led to give, and this is a project that you would like to donate to. Um, you can go to truthseeker.com and click on that link there and, uh, and 
be led to give to the, the GoFundMe. And um, we've already raised almost half in like three days. So I'm just super excited that uh, it's something that's catching on. And someone says, is this something like you're going to keep doing? Is it going to keep doing? I'm going to do one. The goal is just to do one. The goal is not to get in the homeless makeover ministry, right? Um, but I'm going to do one, and I'll probably put another link up there if anybody wants to see more, right, and just see what happens. Uh, but I, I won't push it or anything. So we'll do that one and, and just put it out there and, and just keep moving. That's what it's about. And whoever donates will give you a shout-out. If you have a ministry, if you have a platform, a podcast, whatever it is that you want me to give a shout-out to, at the end of the video, I'm going to give a shout-out to everyone who who donated. And already, man, I'm already blown away by the people. So that's that. Wanted to kind of go into a little bit of detail on the homeless thing, kind of say what it is, what it isn't. And then again, we're just open for God just to do whatever. Someone also asked, you know, you know, don't worry about blessing and make sure you preach the gospel. Make sure you lead them to Jesus. Hey, that goes without saying we're going to let our light shine. We're going to we're going to you know, we're going to be Christ. It's going to be different because we're not going to just essentially tell them about Christ. Right. There's a there's a difference in a lot of people know this difference it's one thing to tell them about jesus and it's another thing to show them jesus to be jesus as two or three touch and agree there i am in the midst where you gather there i am amongst you so as we go out and we you know bless this he who, who comes in the name of the lord that's what we're doing so you know <laughs> that's that goes without saying that that that, that is the gospel man it's to visit the fatherless and the widows and the orphans in their need bro you know what I'm saying? Uh, against such, there is no law. So that's what we're doing. Anyway, I digress. You can go to truthseeker.com to give. Um, the next thing I think is, is, is um, I want to address, this is a message that I got from someone. And I'm going to read this message and kind of, uh, um, and I went back and forth with this person just a little bit here in Discord. I'm not going to say their name, just out of privacy and respect. And I want to say too, I'm I'm pretty sure that all, and you, I think you were aware of it too, if you're listening, um, that our conversation was limited by text. And I think that I, I think we mean the same thing. It just probably sounded a little bit different. So, you know, this for you, this even listening to this may be, be pointless, but I think you may understand me a little bit. But I want to address this. And especially like as soon as we went live, there were people talking about how Jesus is fake and one love for all or some some weird stuff that kind of came through. Um, so I'm going to um, go ahead and read this message that I got. Um, and this is uh, probably off of just me within the last Man, two weeks, just, I don't know, man, just the anointing, just being on my life a little bit stronger, a little bit more bold. You know what I'm saying? It comes and goes. I think there's uh, times where we kind of uh, you know, peer out into the depths of, of, of God, of the spirit realm. And um, I, there's no, th this podcast is the Truth Seeker podcast. There's a bunch of truth seekers who are listening to this. We are about truth. We're about, about exploring into the unknown, having the conversations uh, that other people won't have, especially from a Christian perspective, because I'm a Christian. And this is what this uh, this message is about, that word, me calling myself a Christian. But I think that, you know, there's there's no conversation that I don't that I won't have. And I'm interested in it all. And I want to cover all of it. I mean, we've we've covered so many over less like 300 episodes now. We've covered, you know, homosexuality. I mean, everything controversial. And I've just, I kind of allow the guests to bring what they want to the table and we just have conversation about it <laughs> with a Christian from a Christian perspective. And, um, and there's pros and cons in that for sure. Uh, for some, for some people all automatically think that I vouch for the person, uh, that I'm talking to. And maybe it seems like I do when I plug their website and I have a respectable conversation. I don't, I'm not combative, even if I disagree I try to find where I can agree with them on and we just build from there. Can two walk together lest they agree? I find where I can agree and I build there. And I think that's I, there's so much unity in that and there's so much beauty in that. And I think we need to return to that, um, which, the, uh, you know, it's a s spiritual gift to be able to do that. Um, so that's what I do. People think I'm vouching for other people and I try to find common ground. A lot of times we're saying similar things. You know, there's I, I've talked about this. I've had people on and, and the title of the show, we're talking to them about psychic abilities and um, their pets being able to your pet being able to, like, send you telepathic thoughts. 
and uh, tell you when they're hungry, tell you when, when they want to go outside, that kind of thing. So we started out talking about that for about 15, 20 minutes. And then we got into moving in the prophetic. And this person is talking about like their relationship with Jesus and, you know, everything that is done through Christ. And we went on for another two hours talking about the beauty of Jesus and the gospel and what, you know, and it was just mind blowing. I wouldn't have known that judging by the title of the episode for one and then by their bio and all the stuff that this person puts out. I didn't know that there was another level to this person that I really resonated with. You know what I'm saying? And we was able to find that 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 vein and and really just, um, you know, what I'm saying come together and have a beautiful conversation. And that's what I, that's what this podcast is, is for. Um, and there's so many people who I'm talking to and big name people. And then I mentioned Jesus or mentioned as a Christian doing this stuff. And then they kind of open up and they find common ground with me and they open up on things that they would never talk about with a spiritual audience or a secular audience or whatever the case is. So they kind of feel open. So that's man, this podcast is touching thousands of people, man, just because I'm willing to have the conversation, nothing that I'm, that I'm doing, but I'm just being open and authentic, which is where the power is right now, I believe. So with that being said, um, there are things, times that I do try to, you know, people will say things and then I'll try to, I think we're saying the same thing, but then we're saying totally different things. And some of that gets lost in translation. And, and sometimes the things that I'm trying to build upon, they're totally different than what I, what I mean. But I'd say more than not, they are the same. It's just, it's just tomatoes, tomatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Like it's, you know, we're saying the same thing, just different terminology. I really believe that at the end of the day, for the most part. Hence, let me jump into this. This is from a uh, a listener. This is for some from someone who is uh wanting, who uh, volunteered to try to get me some more guests on the podcast. Reach out to some people, some more occultic, new age type people or whatever, big name people. And uh, they say I can tell that you're leading your guests with a very evangelical bent Uh, Jesus is not a Christian we do not need to lead people into Christianity if we are preaching Christ truthfully we should be leading people out of Christianity to Christ some Christians are already being led out of Christianity to Christ some never have to go to Christianity some will use Christianity as a tool but will not be in bondage to the identification with the way we have been in the past. Maybe you still are. Christianity is okay, but it's not necessary. It can be both beneficial and problematic. People do not need to be Christian to be in Christ. And and so, and here's the thing. Let me say this definition. So I call myself a Christian, right? And I disagree with the majority of what we would call Christian Christianity, Christian doctrine, the majority of it, I don't agree with what we have here in the Western church. Let me say that what we've accepted in the Western church to be truth or to be uh, uh, doctrine agreed upon. I don't at all. I think it's anti-biblical. I think it goes against scripture. You know, so many reasons why I don't. Um, But calling myself a Christian, like, why would you say that? I mean, especially work, you know, walking in the new age circles and spiritual circles. As soon as I say that, that's a red flag. Cause as soon as you say you're Christian, there is a, um, ideology that people believe that comes with it. Okay. You don't like gay people. You believe in hell. You know, you think that any, anything outside of Jesus is demonic. You know, there's all these weird things that kind of come. It's a, it's a loaded term, but one thing about it is I'm I'm big on, on, on the definitions as well, taking these terms back. I've done it for the new age stuff. We're taking these terms back. Occult just means hidden. You know what I'm saying? Meditation. We meditate upon the Lord. We meditate. We go into trances and seek Jesus. Like this is all biblical terminology that we're taking back, you know, symbols and all of these things. So what they mean in their conception. So to call myself a Christian means that I believe uh, that there's power in the death burial and resurrection of jesus christ who defeated sin death and hell he defeated the grave there is no more sting in death christ came to give life and life more abundantly he grants us with eternal life that the bible is speaking about him through genesis and revelation he is the messiah he is the gate that we all may enter to get into heaven now that opens up because he is love that became a person and dwelt among men my faith my object of faith is in the person of jesus christ 
Jesus of Nazareth, who came, who walked the earth as a righteous man, who was a prophet, who was um, uh, showed us how to do this thing. But then he who knew no sin became sin that we may be the righteousness of God. That's why I'm a Christian, because I believe in that. The Bible says in Acts that they were first called Christians in Antioch and they were called Christians in the Bible. And it wasn't a term of endearment. It was like these are little little Christ. And it was almost used as a derogative term. Uh, but this is what they were called. They're also called followers of the way. They were all, you know, disciples of Christ, devotee of Jesus is what I am. And I think that most of you resonate with that stuff. But I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And that name is a spectacle. It is a laughing stock of the world right now. Uh, he said it would be. You know what I'm saying? The servant is not greater than the master. So when I call myself a Christian, it's because I believe in the power of the cross. Let him who glory, glory in the Lord. I have nothing else. I'd have nothing else to give you. Now, I like to have these conversations and these discussions and peer into all of these subjects. But as far as any form of substance, it's in Jesus, man. It's not even in just Christ because, you know, I feel like a message like this comes with kind of what I addressed last week of the fact that, you know, the spiritual community or new age community say there's a difference between Jesus and the Christ. Jesus is one thing, but Jesus and the Christ is another. They'll say the Christ is the spirit. The Christ is the, an, an anointing that comes upon you. And we all can be Christ and a thing. You know, there's all kind of weird things, but there is no Christ without Jesus Christ. He said that there will be many Christ false Christ with lying signs and wonders that will try to deceive you. So I just want to be just a little bit vocal, man, just about what I'm talking about when I call myself a Christian. Again, I don't agree with the majority of that stuff. I know it's an offense for, for many reasons. It's a loaded term that for maybe even in times past that I've stayed away from that I didn't want to be called a Christian because of everything that comes with it. I don't want to be called a Christian because I know I got to answer all these questions. You think I'm this. You think I'm that. You think I'm right wing. You think I'm conservative. You think, you know, all of these things, which are not biblical <laughs> at the end of the day. But it's about Jesus. I'm unashamed of the gospel. I'm unashamed of what the work he's done in my life. And uh, and, and this podcast has allowed me to reach an audience who would never go to church. This uh, podcast has allowed me to. Uh, tap into other people's audience who would never give Christianity or Jesus the time of day because it's a loaded term. They feel like they already know Jesus. It's Fred Phelps. It's the Westboro Baptist Church. It's the Catholic Church. They have all these representations of Jesus, and I'm just here to represent him, to represent him, who he is to me in my life. It's my truth, right? This is what he's done for me. And what he did for me, not only can he, can he do for you, but he wants to do for you. It's a daily, a daily walk, man, with with Christ. And uh, I have nothing else to offer. Now, we can talk about everything else. I want to. We will. We're going to get into it. We're going to talk about all kind of far out stuff. But as far as the substance for me to have something that is the answer that you're looking for and give you like settling for second best and giving you these other alternatives. Like that's just to, that's just to get your attention. But when it really comes out, OK, you really want to know what this is. This is what it is. It's a relationship with the God who created everything, who sent forth his only begotten son and uh, in, in flesh to take on the sins of humanity, that all who put their faith and trust in him and believe shall inherit everlasting life. They shall step into life more abundantly now. Not that they would escape hell in eternity. Some believe that, but they would escape hell now. Dealing with hell now. You're incarcerated now in your mind. You're incarcerated with your belief system, your family. You're, you're living in hell because you're separated from God. But Christ came to draw you unto him, to, to bridge the gap between us and, and the father. And it says we have received the ministry of reconciliation, reconciling people back to the father through the works that Christ did. So that's what I mean when I, when I say I'm a Christian. No more, no less. What if I say I'm a Christian? So I just want to unpack that term. And I know people hear it. Trust me. There's places I can't get in, you know, to be interviewed about my book because I say you even use the word God. Now, if I said source, if I said universe, they'll gladly accept me. But when I talk about the sovereignty of God and and even that word, that's a reproach at this because it's connected to Christianity. You have to say other terms, even in the Christian realm for a lot of people who or trying to disassociate with that term because they know it's loaded. They know it's 
packed with a lot of stuff. They won't even say the name Jesus. They'll say Yeshua, you know, Yahshua, whatever. And and I like to use those terms too, but they use it so that they won't be identified with the church. And let's see what the church is. The church is not what we see in Western Christianity. The church is the ecclesia, the called out one, just the body of Christ who is scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. We all represent Christ when we come together as a people. We're having church right now, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna keep reading. He says, people do not need to be a Christian to be in Christ. The rebuttal is that if you're in Christ, by default, you're a Christian. That's just all, that's all I'm saying. Not not what you thought. Forget what you thought. But if you're in Christ, you're a Christian by default. He says, what I'm saying here was truth that took me 37 years to understand. I don't say it flippantly or disrespectfully. I fully respect you and your ministry. The Christianity piece just doesn't seem to work well with what you're doing, man. And I will say on the contrary, on the contrary, he says the Christianity piece doesn't seem to work well with what you're doing, man. Well, what am I doing if I'm not preaching Christ? Like, I don't have nothing else to give you, bro. You want me, would you want me to give you a cult? Like the occult, you know? And we can look, and I mention this a lot, and I, I have love for these guys and what they've brought to the table, but look at where these people are, man. A wise person learns from their mistakes. But even smarter person learns from the mistakes of others. You can look at somebody's life and see the fruit. That's what we're supposed to judge, man. We're not supposed to judge. We, we judge fruit, man. We're fruit inspectors. We judge fruit. And I see where somebody, when, when you get into all of the occult stuff, I'm finna go in, y'all. I got a bunch of stuff the Lord's been giving me. I've just been holding back. And um, you see the fruit of it. You see what, what's coming of it. And it's not good. He says, you're not really a Christian, is what he says. You're a child of God. I'm both. You're a follower of Christ. I'm both. People who identify as a Christian in our day and age cannot and will not accept you because you're not one of them. You're right. As a, I, I say you're right. That's not the case for like across the board. Like I'm accepted by a lot of Christians, man, like a lot. So much so that it like I had to get over the fact that I wasn't. It was kind of like a badge of honor that I wasn't <laughs> until they started accepting me you know, again. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a believer, man. I'm speaking their language. Dude, this I'm undercover, man. I'm, I'm a fraud when it comes to this stuff. I don't believe in half of the things I talk to these people about. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to turn it off, here's your chance. I'm just giving you, I'm letting you see into my realm. I don't believe in most of this stuff, but I have the conversation with the person. Again, I listen to George Norrie and, and I learned to interview and to have dialogue by listening to hours and hours, like hundreds of hours of this man. Uh, and he just, he just has conversations with people and he don't believe these people. I don't believe half of the stuff that, that people say on here. I'm into the psychology behind it. Why do you believe these things? How does it line up with my worldview? in the Bible. And that's my audience. Trust me, the ones who are, are offended, they, they tune out. There's another podcast. There's another video right beside this one. They'll click and, and watch to pass the time. But it's something that people resonate with. There's something of substance here. That's why. So he said, you know, people who identify as a Christian in our day and age cannot and will not accept you because you're not one of them. Man, Christianity's changing, bro, as far as what we know as, as being the church. They have to. You're right. So many people are leaving the church. You're right. So many people are finding Jesus outside of uh, what we call Christianity. You're right. You're right about all these things. Um, but as far as like substance, man, and, and I got to. He says the church is greater than Christianity. Yeah, but it's kind of e it's equal to, bro. Like we are Christians, man. Like being in Christ, if you are in Christ, right? Isn't that what the word means? <laughs> being in Christ, little Jesuses. Come on, man. And so I'm going to keep reading here. Thank you for the donation, um, Julia. Thank you so much. 
Um, he says, you can continue to be a Christian if you want, but as long as you identify with exclusivity, you will not reach the audience that you are called to reach. Christianity is not the way. Jesus is the way. I agree with, I agree with the second part that Christianity is not the way. Jesus is the way. Yeah. But being in Christ, man, makes you a, being a follower of Christ, being a disciple of Christ makes you by default a Christian. Now, you may not uh, identify with the rest of the Christians and or what they believe or their doctrines and all that kind of stuff. That's that's one thing. But so hopefully we're saying the same thing. It's just lost in translation a little bit. Uh, but I just have to kind of rebuke you when you say uh, you can't continue to be a Christian if you want. You can co- you can continue to be a Christian if you want. But as long as you identify with exclusivity, you will not reach the audience that you are called to reach. See, how can you I don't see how you can say that when I'm already reaching the audience. That I wanted to reach that I'm called to reach. Why would I want to reach a different audience that I'm not called to reach? That that don't even make sense. Like, I'm going to try to reach this audience that I'm not called. No, I'm reaching the ones who, who, you know, the harbor, the, 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 the um, uh, harvest is plentiful. Labor is a few. I'm just doing my labor, doing my part, telling you like it is my, my truth. I can't give you anything else. This is what I'm called to do. So, and we went back and forth just a little bit. And I just think it, I really do think it's just, a, um, I don't know what you want me to, to preach other than that. I don't I don't know what aspects of whatever a Christian or Christianity that I uh, am doing or represent that you don't like. Or what what is the offense like to you? Is it that you must be born again? Is it that that I'm saying the name Jesus? Would you like me to say Yeshua? Would you like me not to say any of it? Do you don't like God? Do you don't like the universe? I'm really, you know, and everyone's different. And I. I the weird thing is I like to use all those words. <laughs> I like to use them all. You know, I'm not married to any of them. I know what they represent. The name is a character is a vibration. His name is not Jesus. I mean, it's, you know, he never heard that name. The J is, is newly introduced, but it means Yah is salvation. It's the same. It's the God is salvation. Yahshua, Yeshua, Jesus, the English pronunciation. It's the same thing. Don't let nobody don't get caught up in in vain uh, ramblings and people trying to throw you off. So we're navigating through that. We're navigating through false Christ. That's for sure. We're ne- we're navigating through people who are enemies of God. They are working to undo uh, Christianity or w- what we know to be Christianity. You know what I'm saying? We got to deal with that. We are the salt of the world. We're the light of the world. If the if the salt loses its, its savor, its flavor, and it can't be used anymore, then it's no good and it's thrown out. So that's what I that's what I do. And I feel like I've been honest with this, though. Like there's times I mean, you guys have heard this many times, so it's nothing new. So I don't know if you just haven't heard those episodes. Again, there's 300 episodes like I don't know if you haven't heard those. I try to be clear again, whatever the, the guest wants to talk about. We'll talk about it. And I, I, I mean, I want to talk about it all. I want to talk about UFOs and how do they fit into our worldview? What's going on? I want to talk about all of this far out stuff because I'm the Christian who talks about those things. I want to get on a show like, like we did with Kirby and talk about the beauty of Jesus and grace and forgiveness and what that can do to your life for two hours. Like, come on. I'd rather talk about that than all the other stuff. Um, Again, I like to go deep. I think that all of these other subjects are deep. Um, I looked at my dog, um, yesterday. So, so when we, we go to pick up my daughter from school, I'm blessed to be able to go to take her to school and pick her up every day. And, um, I bring our little dog with us and, uh, he's learned like on our route home where he looks out the window and he sees things that he pass, we pass and he knows that he can come up and get in my daughter's lap and stick his head out the window. Uh, on the way home and it's when we're close to the house you know and he he get, comes and, he, and she rolls the window down he comes sticks his head out and I'm looking at him I'm like how can he breathe with his head out the window like that because the air is just hitting him you know and uh, I feel like he's holding his breath and then and I told my daughter that and she laughed and then he steps down she says he's catching his breath so he comes back and he catches his breath and then he sticks his head back and peers out the window and to the other side <laughs> 
<laughs> and he gets to feel feel the euphoria of the wind hitting him in the face face but there's times i feel like he's got to come back to reality and catch his breath okay let me give it another shot and that's what we got to do man we could become so spiritual minded that we're no earthly good but rather be so spiritually minded that you're earthly incredible do it man we got to have substance if your spirituality isn't practical if your Christianity isn't practical, then it's it's null and void. It's it's idolatry at the end of the day. And that's the thing with a lot of the occult practices and a lot of the, the strange and curious arts, man, is that they don't have any practical use. You kind of build this imagination and these these ideas in this world that is only real to you. And there's some truth there of your frame of reference and what is possible and what you can in the artist to be able to bring it into reality to affect others, especially if it's something good that's going to help them. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the goal for anything that I peer into the other side of my relationship with Christ and going into the the ethers and having beautiful encounters with him is how can I bring this out? There's things that I start in the secret place with the father that's revealed in the waking uh, moments. And that's one one way that God speaks. And we got to learn that. But if it's if we don't have something that's tangible, then it's in vain and it's idolatry. And we got to understand that it's not knowledge puffs up. Pride cometh before a fall. And we see that many times the, with the, the, the wealth of knowledge and, and learning and curious arts and all of that stuff. Like it comes vexation of spirit. Don't wait till the last minute till your spirit is vexed. You can feel it coming on. You can feel it. Have your spirit being vexed by by what? By spirits. Have your spirits, your spirit vexed by unclean spirits. And your auric field and your persona and you're overwhelmed because you know stuff that other people don't know. It wasn't designed to be like that at all. You're getting into idolatry. You need to reset. You need to unplug. You need to do the first works. We're going to talk about that here in a little bit when my guest comes on. Doing the first works. That's something that's really near and dear to my heart. I'm excited to uh, talk with my guest here in a little bit. So I wanted to put that out there, man. And uh, I think I've been open about that. I don't think this is anything new. I think I, I think there's, I feel more excited at times about, <laughs> you know, being lulled by religion. Cause even though that, you know, some, I get into religion, I get into the monotony of, okay, another podcast. Okay. Another day, you know, you have to stir yourself up. You have to, I have, I have to get in the word again. I've been talking about it, like getting in the scripture for myself to commune with God, not to get something to teach. But to but to commune with the father, like, OK, God, look, this is my give us this day, our daily bread. Father, I need something for today. Give us this day. Don't give me something for tomorrow. I need something for today. You know, and we have we all have to do that from the, the least to the greatest of us. Nobody is exempt. It gets it turns into dead religion really quick. You can become a Pharisee and a sad you see overnight. And you represent that to other people because you become prideful and arrogant and um you know, and, and your ex, ex, your exclusivity, that's the word I didn't like. You know, I'm really against exclusivity and I make it a point not to, you know, even when I even the term Jesus and what he is and the Messiah and what he represents, it's far beyond anything that we can comprehend. It is love. He is love made manifest into a person. And that love expands religion. That love expands Christianity. And that's what that's what I believe. But I'm telling you, I'm getting so many messages. People are wanting to engage with this Christ. People are wanting to engage with Jesus. They want what we have. They're messaging me from all over the world. I'm doing consultations. People are coming into the community. They have no idea of, of Christ and who he is. They've heard me talk about it. They've seen a manifestation of his grace. Um, they've heard other people's encounters and, and they want it. They want more. Many will see and fear and come to know him through the work that we're doing. And uh, and, and you better believe it. So we got We have to have the right things. To, it's a great responsibility. And how dare I uh, give them a lesser truth or give them something just to hold them over? There's men. Listen, we're going to have the conversation. I'm going to talk about it all. Y'all know that I got we got almost two, two months of shows booked with random guests. Um, and we're going to talk about it all. I will say there's a lot of uh, deep Christian mystical people who are coming on here, which uh, I feel like I can open up a little bit more with versus the um, 
the medium or the, the, the psychic or whatever the case is. But sometimes we find a good vein there too, and we're able to have some good conversation. Let me jump into the chat here while I'm waiting on my guests to come on uh, here in a little bit. Let's see. Um, jumping in here into the chat. I'm going to Chris Garner. What up, boy? He says, never hurts to reiterate your standpoint and base belief for sure. I don't have a statement of faith. You know what I'm saying? So I just got to say it on here. Uh, new people need to hear it. And it never hurts to bear testimony for sure, man. Thank you for the encouragement. Um, D33 Martin says, I uh, can't wait to read your book, True Seeker. I'm about to order it. Thank you so much. It really helps to, uh, it helps support anything that I do that uh, supports the cause. It really helps to, uh, to support me and my family to continue to do this, you know. Julia says, you're connecting to many. Um, this scripture also says, man, if, if you're ashamed of him in front of men, he'll be ashamed of you in front of uh, the angels. Like, hold on, you won't say my name. How you want me to say your name? Well done, that good and faithful servant. You were scared to tell people you love me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm here to call people back to their first love. And if not, if you've never experienced that or encountered it, I'm here to bid you to come and taste and see that the Lord is good. There's many ways that we engage with God. Right. And I'm, and that's an encounter that you can have that no one can take away from you. People can talk you out of belief systems. They can talk you out of relig uh, religion, doctrines. Trust me. There, I remember waking up every day was a new belief and a new system and what I believed and what was truth and people talking me out of it. And I, I made my mind to, to, to preach this. And this was, this was my belief and this was my stance and I'm not moving. And then somebody sends me a link and, and sends me scriptures that just blow my mind and undo everything I thought I knew. And I get scared and get depressed and like, Oh wow. I thought I had it figured out. It's the song and dance, man. It's the song and dance. Only thing I know is Christ and him crucified, man. It's the simplicity of the gospel. And the thing about it is a lot of times it's so simple that we all miss it because it's too simple. We want something deep. We want something you got to work for. We want to jump through hoops. We want to earn something. That's not grace. That's not Christianity. It's freely you have received, freely give. Silver and gold have I not, but what I give to you, I give to you in the name of Jesus. Take up your mat and walk that the blind shall see the the lame shall recover. The dead shall live. And if that's not happening, what is it? It's idolatry. Shout out to everybody holding us down in the chat. <clears throat> Frederick, Randall, Julia, Jose, Cricks. Let's see. Julia says, I don't live chat ever, but you bring out the best at me. And I'm sure many. Thank you for that. Um, D33 says the faithful believers will move in one accord. That's why we resonate with truth in the podcast like Truth Seeker. For sure, man. Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus, Yeshua, Frederick says. Yep. God with us. Thank you guys for uh, hanging out, man. You guys are awesome. Guests will be here shortly. Um, Is within, not without. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, we, we commune with, with Christ. We commune with God, the Holy Spirit, by going within. You have to go within. Close your eyes. That's the thing about it because you don't need anything outside of you to come to. You don't need a high priest anymore. He is our high priest. He's made us. He made us priest over our homes. He's a priest made after the order of Melchizedek. That's power. It's here to empower you. It's here to enlighten you. It's here to set you free. Thank you again for the another donation, Julia. <laughs> You're too kind, my friend. Thank you. Uh, pure character flying in the air with a red cape and a smile on his face. Thank you, Julia. Man, Danny says, You're a blessing, bro. I love you, brother. Love you, Danny. And I love you. And I love seeing you shine with your truth, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because they're truths, plural. Again, there's there's lesser truths. You know, there's... All of these things that we're trying to navigate through, but there is truth. And just because you look into little truths don't mean you negate the truth. Be open, man. People need to hear it plainly. You know what I'm saying? Julie says, I'm passing your link. Thank you, my friend. Um, yeah, all, all of that helps for sure. Um, I got something else I want to talk about. I don't know if I'm going to do this in a different video. Probably just hang 
you know, put this on a different podcast, but um, I'm not even going to mention it. It's something else I want to tap into dealing with uh, occult knowledge and um, hidden knowledge and things like that. I'm reading your your, your question, um, Gavin. Gavin wants to know the difference between Eli, Elijah, and uh, Elisha. Those are all three different people, like you're saying in the chat. They're different. They're different people. Um, what goes back, if you want to know what what they are and what they mean, um, those names, the L's, you have those that come before and they mean something. So, L is is God. L is God. Elohim. So if you have the word Michael, 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 uh, God is with us or one with God, who is like God, those kind of things. And so, you know, Mike L, Raphael, Yuri L, the L is God. So those names are titles that mean something. So Michael again. And then so in this case, you have Eli, Elijah, Elisha, Elias, Isaiah, even um those the l there means god and then whatever whatever the uh the suffix means so let me uh we'll look them up for you while i got you here just so you know but yeah trying to understand the names and uh and the character and uh what you know to really get the gist of what that story is saying to you you definitely have to look into the the, the terminology and um to get a little bit more breakdown. So Elijah, um, yeah, but there's so many L's, right? Uh, God of Jehovah. Uh, Elijah means the name of a famous prophet to other Israelites. So L is God. And then Yah, Elisha, is uh, Jah. Jah or Yah. I mean, you've heard it many different ways. Which there is no J, but uh, you know it's Yah Yahshua. Uh, so when it comes down to breaking down the names and people want the names, um, the name that I use in my I don't use it a lot, um, but in my secret place in my prayer when things are happening, I use uh, the Hebrew name Ahaya. And that's I don't even u- really use Yahweh that much. I I do, but uh, um, the 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 powerful one for me is Ahaya. Aha, Yah. Ahaya, Ashur, Ahaya, which means I am that I am, and I will be whatsoever I will be. And so when Moses asked him his name, he says, Tell him that I am. Tell him that I am sent you. And the word I I am there in, in Hebrew is Ahaya. So that's the names I fear when you want to break up. Uh, fe- yeah, names I use, and I do fear. I'm reading this question and talking at the same time. Um, Julia says, uh, that's a smart way to help people underst- understand instead of fearing. Hebrew letters are numerical too. Yeah. Yeah. And then you get into the Hebrew letters themselves being uh, sentences and, and meaning um, different things. Frederick says there is a J in the Coptic script. Yeah. A lot of the, um, a lot of the, uh, other ones they instead of a it's the same thing instead of a j there's an i you know what i'm saying instead of a j there's an i let me see okay she's uh oh she's joining in here's my guest alicia her audio is connecting right now hello Hi. How's it going? Welcome to the True Seeker Podcast. We are live on the air. Yay. Good. Thank you. Heck yeah. So how are you today? In between jobs? I am good. I am good. It's raining in California. Woo! That's a good thing out here. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So exciting to have you. So I've been um, I've been watching your lives uh, for a while and uh, really like what you bring to the table. Um, like what you do, I feel like you're, you're really balanced. That's something I look for instead of like 
all of this or all of that is a the balance, a little bit of everything is really what we need. And I think that's where the yeah. body of Christ is headed. Like, you know what I'm saying? Good foundation, good doctrine, supernatural, great, a little bit of everything mixed to us. I really like what you bring to the table and I watch, watch your lives a lot. Um, so I want to, even, even the first time, I didn't even know if I had maybe mentioned in a live stream or about getting you on for a podcast or something. I feel like I, I reached out to you, but I didn't see nothing in messenger. So it was cool when you made that post yesterday. And I was like, let's see about getting her on. And then my, my guest had to back out and then you were able to do it. So I'm glad we got to connect. Yeah, me too. I was really like, wow, because I don't really know who listens to my lives. I just put them on when I feel like I'm supposed to. And, you know, so it's not always something I do super regularly. Um, so I just think it's great when people are like, yeah, I listen to it. And wow, I get a lot. And I'm all, it means a lot to me. And um, yeah, like it just gets me excited because I do think that the balance is necessary. Um Cause it's not just all about the supernatural and it's not just all about our physical lives. It's both and more. And I think that that's a good term because I think it explains what I was, because I, I commented on a post that you did yesterday and you wanted me to explain. I was like, you know, it'd be great to explain on the podcast, you know? And, uh, and I think it, ex I think balance explains it and we'll, we'll get into it a little bit more because you're talking about, you know, doing things greater than Jesus. And I'm like, well, we can, but we need to make sure we're doing the, the first work. So I want to get into that. Um, how, do, how do you say your uh, last name for those people who are watching? Just... Yes, Turnock. Turnock. Okay. Awesome. So t talk a little bit about the, the post that you made yesterday and, and what you were you're trying to get across. Um, sure. So, you know, I have a variety of, of different friends who believe different things. And one of the things I was really wanting to address there is this idea of greater works. And um, there's so many people are like, well, the greater works are healing and the greater works are like uh, what, um, like massive healings or, you know, it's technology or it's bringing heaven to earth and, and the kingdom of God and bringing it here and, and all these different things. And, and really, if you actually read that scripture in context, it actually has, has nothing to do with, with any of those. And those can be tools. Healing can be a tool to reveal Jesus to a person. You know, that's really, if you read it in context, it was all about revealing Jesus to bring everybody back in reconciliation to the Father. And, you know, we think that all these greater works are physical things, but the physical manifestations always flow from spiritual. So if we keep that in mind, then we can easily see where everybody has their part in the body of Christ. So someone who is more, say, um, an atmospheric person, or um, they kind of do things in prayer in the spirit that would be something that they're going to release in a meeting or even in an atmosphere or in a region, which re really is Jesus. They're releasing Jesus in that place. So that way, either they, depending on their calling, can pick up on it and release it, or someone else who maybe that is their calling to bring forth Jesus in that way, will then therefore bring forth a physical manifestation of what's being released in the spirit. Sometimes that's technology. Sometimes that's an invention. Sometimes, like I said, that's a healing. Sometimes it's just bringing that's a... Jesus to the party, right? Exactly. <laughs> bringing him to a place that he wasn't before, or, or 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 at least people didn't know that he was there, kind of thing, right? Yes. And it's funny and too that... because because like if you keep reading, like it's talking about the the Holy Spirit coming, right? And it's like. And he's really saying, look, I'm sending y'all out. Again, we know why the Holy Spirit came. Is, and he said, it's good that I go, that, he, that the comforter would come, because he's going to comfort you, he's going to teach you, he's going to instruct you and lead you into all truth. And uh, so it's good that I go so that the Holy Spirit can... So he's pretty much saying I can be with each one of you individually as well as the whole world and go out and greater works yeah. would you do because we're not just going to win our region. We're going to win the world and the Holy Spirit's going to help us do that, Right. Yes. And but that's, so, that, that's it. And so it's, people, it's that people again, when it comes to the supernatural or the way our minds work is we're like, 
signs and wonders. Okay, we're going to do greater feats that Jesus didn't do, right? We're going to be able to fly. We're going to be able to teleport, levitate. We're going to be able to call down fire from heaven. We're going to be able to make things manifest Jesus did instantly. all of that. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I know. Really? Well, so, so that's the plumb line. So if he, if he did that, then we're going to do way more, man. <laughs> yeah. We're, you know? And the thing is, is that we make that physical. Mm-hmm. We make all of those things physical and it's not the, 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 I don't believe that these greater things that we're all searching for are all going to be physical manifestations because people were doing that. Even in Jesus's day, there were sorcerers. There were people that they could do quote unquote healings, right? Simon, the sorcerer that was yeah. after Jesus, but still he was doing things. There were still, you know, calling him names and saying well he has a demon or he has this because he does these healings but he does it through this power and that wasn't true we all know that but it was because they were familiar with seeing these things right they were familiar with seeing people being healed they were familiar with spirits being cast out they were familiar with these things so that's nothing new but the newer thing is that we now actually have full access through Jesus to the father. And then therefore everything, everything, because Jesus is the kingdom. So everything in the kingdom we have, because it's Jesus, he is the King, but he is also the kingdom. He's, he's everything. He hmm. is the peace. He is the righteousness. He is the goodness. He Come is on now. You know, the judge. He is, he is everything. And so everything we see in the kingdom is Jesus, everything. It's not just, oh, it's the kingdom of God. It's Jesus making himself manifest in this world. So when people are like, oh, I'm going to bring heaven to earth or I'm going to bring the kingdom of God to earth. Really, (laughs) you're just bringing Jesus to humanity. You're bringing him to earth. And this whole entire idea that heaven's going to come to earth, that's not, not in scripture. New earth, new Jerusalem. That's what we're meant to have. This earth, and this is just my thing Mm -hmm. of, um, my own personal eschatology then mm-hmm. i don't even know if i want to call it eschatology but whatever that would be the label. <laughs> ponderings um, i don't think yeah i don't think that this earth will be changed i believe that we have a new heaven and a new earth which is scripture um if do you, you think, think that now it, you think that now like like after christ that's that happened or, or or just like after the holy spirit was poured out we have a new i heaven think that earth? there's i think that there is in the spirit where there's no time it's eternal. There's no time. Everything is finished there. Everything is Mm -hmm. there, but there in our physical world, there is a time where we are stuck in a physical dimension of, of time where things are worked out. So I also believe that that is also something that is happening in regards to the end of this earth and the beginning of a new heaven and a new earth. So in our physical time, I don't think that we have gotten to the new, new earth yet. And I think that that's why there's still all of these um, things of, of greater works and bringing people in and, you know, bringing Jesus to the world. So then that way they all can be saved. Yeah. You know, that, well, that yeah. is always open his desire is that all would be yeah. saved. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, and I know we're, we're switching the <laughs> topic when it comes know. to that, but like uh, I'm the same way because like it talks about the new covenant that we won't even need to tell anybody about God. Like all will know. And there's no way I think we're in a piece of yeah. that because like we have our conscience, you know what I'm saying? And, and he bears witness with our conscience. And when we steal, you know, we know we're, we're, we're breaking the law of God. You know what I'm saying? When we lie, when we cheat, you know, there's mm-hmm. many, that there's different ways that we know that. And, and so I'm convinced that even like, before Christ, like something happened and people had to have it written down with the law. Hey, don't steal from nobody. Why? Why not? Well, because it's not yours. It's not, don't kill anyone. Why not, Lord? Like, but now I think there's a new man or something different in the hearts of and minds of every individual who comes into the earth. And there's this consciousness there. Now we can have our conscience here with the hot iron and we can obey it. And it's and it's the law of God written on our heart. So I think we're there to some extent. But as far as like all of it being fulfilled and played out, I'm not really sure as well. Like, you know, probably similar yeah. to you. Yeah. And that's why I think that there, there's there's that physical working out, because otherwise there's other places in scripture that talks about that process of like work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah. Like we're saved, but we also it's a sanctification process that we work out 
And it's not like some, oh my gosh, she's going to burn me in hell if I don't know. It's because genuinely, it's because you so want to be one with Jesus and one with God that you don't ever want to do these things that break his heart. So when he reveals, the more closer you get to Jesus, the more closer he'll start revealing things on the inward motives of your heart. And as he draws you closer and he draws you closer, those things fall off. It's the same process that I believe the earth is in as well. Wow. It's yeah. a different process, but it's that unfolding process. Well, of- if, you, if you look at us like a collective, like, because we like to look at it, our, our individual lives and our job and our career. But when, you, when mm-hmm. I think God looks at it, at it, he does look at us individually like a cells, right? But when we all come together, we formulate Jesus. There's an aroma that raises up and God is like judging nations over what everyone's doing together. So we're, we're definitely, as we're doing it individually and God is working through so many other people, like, you know what I'm saying? The, mm-hmm. the earth is naturally going through these changes because its inhabitants are. Yeah. Well, it's birthing pains. You know, there. so it's like we talk about all these things that are happening. We're all like, oh, the end times is near or oh, it's this or oh, it's that. But it's like really it's birthing pains and how how at least I have okay, I'm going to share a lot. Sorry. Um, how at least I have seen the the end of the earth coming. I've totally seen it as as literally like burning up with fire. But as it burns up and and, and, and is destroyed out of the ashes is new. Yeah. And, you know, and that's how I have always seen it. And there's a lot of scripture that actually even speaks on that. Mm -hmm. So um, and that was honestly even I started seeing that in visions and God was showing me different things in that before I really even looked into any of it um, in scripture. Like I kind of heard things here and there, but I had never really like truly studied or dug into it. And God had already started showing me things, you know, like when you when you're one with Jesus, like you have access to all knowledge, you know, you have access to everything. Oh, that is in, in him that is inside of time, outside of time and, and is just above and beyond anything that we could truly put into words here in this earth. You know, there, there's just heavenly things. There's things in the, in the new earth There are eternal things. That it's like, there's just truly no words to fully grasp and explain. And again, going back to the greater works, like I totally believe that that is all involved with greater works things. Cause like you said, no one will be taught by man. We won't have to teach, teach them, you know? And, um, where I come from, I'm, I, I go to a little place. It's very small. Um, but we're very mighty, <laughs> small in numbers, very mighty, but we're, um, the spirit and the bride kingdom coalition in Lindsay, California. And, um, where I'm from, we, we, we have teachings kind of, but a lot of it is just sharing and sharing the things together that God is showing us. And from that Holy spirit teaches us through each and everything that someone is experiencing. Yeah. That's and a lot of that going on now for sure. Amazing. Yeah. And it's, it's, so it's like, it's almost less about teaching and it's more just about sharing and then letting Holy Spirit reveal to that person and to that person and to that person. And as that happens, it's, it ends up becoming so much more beautiful because then everybody brings a part of Jesus to the table, mm-hmm. you know, and, and for some people like in the early church, some people, it's a song, all of a sudden God just put a song on their heart or for somebody it was. It, it was a word and it was something to expand upon or for somebody it was a vision or it was uh, a dream or it was an exhortation or an encouragement or a testimony, you know, but everybody has something to share. Everybody has value. Yep. Everybody. Yeah. That's what, you know, that's what messed me up in the church early on. Cause it eventually <laughs> it was like, I was just watching a production. Like they gave me a, a what do you call it? The little pamphlets, like, we're going to have three fast, three slow. There's an offering. We're going to talk about missions in Africa. Uh, we got the sermon, out, our prayer. And then I was like, man, this is, I'm just watching. I'm not a part of this. I'm just watching it, you know? And I was like, man, so uh, the church started in the home. The church is going mm-hmm. back to the home. Cell groups and people online. This is huge, right? So we, you know, I think 
you know, my community, we do we do that as well. Thursday nights, we hey, what's going on? If I have something I feel led to teach, I'll teach it. But it's open for other questions and what are you experiencing and things like that, just to open it up and uh and really to do church. Uh, that's where the fivefold comes in. It's not just one person leading everything. It's everybody coming together and just organic. It's new. It's breathing. It's moving. It's alive. Um, so uh, and also going back to the like the first um, doing the um, the greater things for me, it's like yeah. there's the thing of like, um, again, the signs and wonders. Well, Jesus didn't do this, but I'm going to do it. Y'all going to see me flying around town. Y'all going to y'all going to see me have, you know, might have my debt consolidated in, in, overnight. You know, whatever. I mean, so many far out. And, and trust me, I believe in all of that. Right. But again, mm -hmm. there's this there's a, a, a group of people who would kind of put the cart before the horse and they're not doing the first works. I mean, going to Hebrews uh, six, even is talking about like, look, we need to. We need to get the first yes. stuff down. We're not even doing the basic things that we did, but we're trying to go above and beyond Jesus. Let's make sure yeah. we're doing the basic stuff. We're forgiving sins, man. We're letting people know that they're loved. You know, we're spending time with the widows and orphans. Like, you know, our spirituality is practical, right? So starting there. Yeah. And then if the windows of heaven open up and you're doing all these mighty works, then I'm for it. Because like you said, there are witches. There are people who get in through uh, by other means who are doing all types of signs and wonders but that we think that that validates a mm -hmm. message like signs and wonders the bible says signs and wonders shall follow them that believe and it was they were specific for sure but um but that doesn't va that didn't validate the message right it was the gospel and it's the fruit that validated yeah. the message well the interesting thing is after before or after every single sign and wonder that he did it was always said he was moved by the people or he was moved with compassion or it was mercy or it was whatever, right? It was never for power. It was never to show a sign and wonder. It was never to, oh, I'm going to show you. It was always compassion that moved his heart. And so it's that even in and of itself would be an inner heart check to be like, am I doing this truly out of compassion that God is giving me for that person, that Jesus is giving me for that person, mm -hmm. or duty. am I doing it for another? <laughs> doing duty, it for duty or, yeah. oh, this will get the people to, to really come more often because I need more people in my church or whatever. Yeah. You know, there are so many, there's a plethora of inner heart motives that Jesus, when he, as, again, as we get closer to Jesus, he comes and he, um, purifies, you know, and you're talking about like the first works and, and to me, even those, those first works are, um, like that, even, even those, those first works truly, I believe are a sign of greater works of Jesus working in, in you and in your heart. They're a sign, you know, if, if you, you, great, you can go and, um, heal all of these people. Cool. And then when you're done, depending on your calling, because I mean, some people are genuinely called to just like, they're just going to heal the masses. So I totally believe in staying in your lane. But when you're done healing all the people, you know, are you still loving and kind to your leadership? Are you still peace at peace with them? Are you patient? You know, um, are you able to, spend time with with different people are do you have the a uh, good character you know um all that stuff at the same time jesus knows how to work in every single person so we have all this big uproar with a lot of people of well what about this leader or what about that leader and i totally get it some of it's pretty like crazy <laughs> um you know we would look and be like but they were doing again they were doing such great things they were doing all these things that we think are and in my head, I'm thinking that there's the inner working of the heart. And really, like, if you really think about it, I'm just kind of getting this. What is the greatest work than a renewed heart? What is the greatest, what is a greater work than, than Flying. all of a sudden Flying. somebody becoming a new creation? Flying. <laughs> Levitating. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I was gonna be like, witches. Okay, they can do all that, and yet they're still dead in their yeah. sins. 
Yeah, like, no, I'm, they're I'm still with dead. you. I'm with you. Like that's the. I mean, that's the even the the, the proof that that the scriptures are real <laughs> is that you know I yeah. can see a life transform. Like people, I talk about it all the time. It's like people are trying to prove the scriptures by like trying to find. Uh, Noah's Ark and they're trying to find like remnants of like biblical s- history and things like that um, but it's like look the Bible is real because I put my faith in Christ and he showed up when I needed him the most you know and he came into my life and changed me that's all yeah, it doesn't matter mm-hmm. if you believe in it or not but uh, if you need it it's here and this is the gospel right that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us and it's a it's a it's a, the word is alive Right. And if you if you if you apply it to your life, if you read it, if you seek after God with an open heart and get into scriptures like God will change your life literally with an open heart. But if you don't and you read it, it's going to you're not going to understand it. Right. It's going to be that kind of thing. But for me, like that's the biggest thing is a life transform. That's that's the biggest miracle ever as well. So. And that's I mean, that's the thing. And again, that, that that's all Jesus. That's all revealing the nature of Jesus, like that's, that's it. You know, and even like you said, like the Holy spirit comes and all that stuff. But again, what does Holy spirit do comforts and does all that stuff, but he points to Jesus and then Jesus points to the father. And then the father points to Jesus who then Jesus points and says, Hey, but Holy spirit, you're going to need. And then Holy spirit's like, but I'm going to lead you to Jesus. And then Jesus is like, and I'm going to reveal it to the father. And then Jesus, and then the father is like, and I am all about Jesus. And Jesus is like, and the Holy spirit. It's this beautiful. That's why they're one because they all work together, but they all have a different facet, you know? And when we have all of him in us working and moving it's just constantly revealing him in the earth and it's constantly bringing life to every single person that you meet whether you physically see it in that moment you meet them or not there's been a seed planted and as paul says some plant some water but god brings the increase and it's always his working in each and every single person that we meet and so it's like what what could be a greater work than wherever you go Jesus is being revealed. Life is being brought forth. A God consciousness is coming into that, your workplace. A God consciousness and awareness is coming in to your school. A God consciousness and awareness is coming into your family. You know, and when we focus truly just on Jesus, you know, I, there's this big thing all over Facebook and even here in the church, you know, we can't, um, the reason why we don't love is because we don't love ourselves. And I'm all like, in my head, I'm like, no, 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 no. The reason why we don't love is because we don't love Jesus enough. It's not because we don't love ourselves enough because Jesus will give us the love to even love ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then therefore his love will help us to love others. That even in and of itself is a greater work. Yeah. Because prior to Jesus, even coming on the scene, everything was a work everything everything was a work if you look at the jewish people everything they did was work 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 well i gotta do this so i can do this so i can be look good i can be good and i can be right with god it was all all a work it was all not necessarily out of love you know it when he jesus came now it's like he changed that heart of stone and gave us a heart of flesh so now we can truly love yep yeah, I think that's what, again what, what happened. Like the difference between <clears throat> people, you know, in the Old Testament, even um, that they had that a lot of them had that heart of stone, you know. And I think some of us still have it until we're renewed by uh, by, by Christ and having our own. Um, that's the thing for me. Like people are like against the sinner's prayer, or asking Jesus to come in your heart. But I'm like, I need you to come live in my heart. I need you to give me a new Amen. one. I need you to renew it. Like I need them in my heart. And and he gives us a heart that cries out, Abba, Father. So, yeah, we have, mm-hmm. and even mentioning the heart, people go to Jeremiah, I think it's 19 or 17, I can't remember. Uh, it talks about, I think it's 1919, I think. It talks yeah. about uh, the heart is deceitful and uh, above anything. Who who can know it, right? But then New God. Testament, God gives us a new heart. <laughs> That cries out, Abba Father, like we're thirsty for him and it sustains us. He sustains us. And through relationship with with God, through the person of Jesus, being taught, comforted, guided by the Holy Spirit, the song and dance with all of creation through those three um, really breathes life back into uh, the the life and the heart of an individual. So that's the gospel, man. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And there there is no greater work and then the great thing that i love about that and is that um 
<laughs> when we start talking about denominations, this is, I love, I love the entire body of Christ. Like, mm -hmm. I do I too. I've come to, I've come to <laughs> like appreciate it. Catholics, everything. I love you. Evangelicals, yeah. I love you. Charismatics, yeah. I love you. Pentecostals, I love you. You know, like ev Baptist. everybody across. Baptist. Oh yeah, Baptist, <laughs> woo! Methodist, I grew up Methodist, hey. Like, and they I all, you know, the, I, you know, the one, one reason I love them because they all have something different to bring to the table. If we'll learn, if we'll exactly. listen. Yeah. And when you have Jesus in you, you're humble to learn from everybody. Yeah. I can go anywhere to any church and learn something from God. Like, like that. Learn anything from what he is speaking, from what he is doing and with ease because he's always speaking. It doesn't matter if that person has anger or judgment or whatever is going on in their heart. Holy Spirit will speak through a donkey even. Like, yeah, God is always speaking. He's always teaching something. It's just we in our own hearts, if we're saying that person's this, that person's that, that person's this, it's like, What's in your heart that's going on? Because if they love Jesus, they have something in Jesus. They have something from him that's inside of them. And you can either pick up on it and hear it past everything or not. And if you can't, then that's, you know, that's where you go with your own heart and be like, Jesus, help me. And again, like the idea of, of love, like personally, we can talk about all the spiritual stuff, which I love. I'm a very, very. Oh, yeah. Let's talk, about it. Let's talk person. about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Highly atmospheric person. Like very much so move in the atmosphere. Very much so move with um, mm, um with with just the, a lot of the unseen and things like that. Highly aware of all of that stuff. But at the same time, we have to value the physical. Because Jesus never valued one above the other never you will never see him valuing the spiritual world in fact oftentimes he didn't even talk a whole lot about it like if you really want to get down to it he didn't even talk a lot about he did and he didn't you yeah, know there, there's, and this, he there's actually, this weird oh, go ahead. there's this weird um movement i would say and it's a gnostic it's it's definitely gnostic in nature of like yeah touch not taste not um these christians who believe that anything that comes from the earth is fallen and demonic in nature and it's like the refusal of such pleasures and having fun and just living life right so their christianity has involved in evolved into some form of escapism escapism from the day-to-day -day, from the cares of this world not dealing with facing your fears or dealing with them but escaping from them so there's just like this heavenly ecstasy which i love getting caught up raptured up in the spirit of god <laughs> which is so beautiful yeah but it, it becomes Great. this form of escapism and again, we become so earth, spiritual minded that we're no earthly good, right? And so there's this weird thing. I don't know if you've dealt with some of those people, but there's a, a movement of people. Oh that, yeah, that's that we our deal with. that's our ministry specialty. For sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> we help. We uh, definitely help with learning the physical life and how to actually walk in the physical world, um, as well as the heavenly, as well as the spiritual realms, as well as as all of that stuff. Because Jesus did it. So why can't we, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? Um, and, and really, I think the, the, um, I think the, one of the biggest works and one of the, the um, a greater work, I believe is unity of the brethren. Yeah. It's, you a, know? it's a harder one. So, yeah. And we can't do that if we're constantly being in the spirit all, all day long. Because, you know, it's, it's, it, we, we got to live it here, too. We have to be able to walk it out here. We have to be able to love each other. And you will not grow in maturity if you cannot stay in fellowship. You will not. You, you'll, you'll go in the spirit and you'll get lots of revelation and you'll get lots of knowledge. But what does it say about knowledge? Apart from Jesus... It will puff up. It will puff up. Period. 
And there is, I b- truly believe there's no greater work than unifying the brethren in the body of Christ. Because until we are unified, scripture says this, until we are unified, Christ will not come again. Very clear. Jesus's words himself. He is waiting for us to become unified and actually truly what um, we're one body as one to truly love each other, to truly lay down our lives. Paul constantly talked about that in Galatians all over the place of like, you know, love each other, love each other, bear with one another. Um, John or Peter, I think talks about it after having loved one another, then love each other deeply. That's a greater work. We did not, prior to Christ coming, that was not even talked about. (laughs) Let's be honest. It wasn't even talked about. And truly, if you look back in the garden, what was the sin? Everybody's like, oh, it was sin against God. No, it was sin against God and sin against each other because they started accusing each other, right? They started accusing each other. Whose fault was it? It was the woman. You give me the woman. It was her fault. Oh, well, no, the man, he, la, 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 la. Oh, it was the serpent. It was the sin was between God and man. So the greatest thing we could ever do is be united to God again, which Jesus bought. But Jesus also bought for us to be united to each other because he not only, not only took the sins that we did against God, but he also took the sins that we did relationally against Mm -hmm. each other upon himself. Every sin. Every single sin was laid upon him. That's good. I'm. So, re- I just looked it up here, like like where the word unity is in the Old Testament, and it's in. It's only mentioned one time, at least by that word unity, and uh, the word. Let's see. It means um, to bring together uh, a unit, uh, united alike, um, together. Um, but it's Psalm one thirty three one, which is. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, it says, behold, listen to this, right? How good and pleasant it, it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Mm-hmm. How good and it pleasant like old... it is to dwell together in, in unity. Mm-hmm. And it's it's good. like so, the anointing oil of, uh, what's go, his name's beard? Yeah, Aaron's it keep, beard. It keeps going into the, yeah, that. Yeah. And uh, see, that's the thing too. So I, I definitely come from a, a place of where I was real combative with the scriptures and trying to convince people about what to believe. And I was in a in a, a sect of christianity that was taught me how to do that and um and i was i was bitter you know a lot of different stuff and i came became more open and finding god in everything and, and you know what i'm saying and um mm-hmm. what what it did for me that it, it changed the way i reacted to this scripture the scripture says uh uh can two walk together lest they agree and so we used to always say that and we would look for things that uh made us different from everyone I mean, I, yeah. I've talked to Christians who would just like go go through my beliefs and just ask me all these questions until they found something that they disagreed with. And then they would just mm-hmm. kick me to the side and say, oh, he doesn't believe that Jesus is God. Oh, he doesn't believe in the Trinity. Oh, he doesn't believe in this once saved always. And they would just kind of go through your belief system until they can find something. But now I'm like, can two walk together lest they agree? Let's find what we agree on and walk together yes. <laughs> in unity. You know, and then go from there because it's good yeah. and pleasant when we do it. The scripture says that. Mm-hmm. And it brings him joy. It pleases him. Like there's so much that happens and there's so much more that can be accomplished when you dwell together. There, there, there is so much more. Uh, think about it. How many more people can you go and share the gospel with? How many more people can you go and like feed how many more people can you go and um, minister to and just love on and just shine the light of Jesus to when if it's just one, you're very limited, but say you have 20, that is like so much more, so many more people, you know, and, and really, you know, <laughs> one of our, our uh, ministry leaders, um, cause we have prayer and worship tonight and he, he texted a quote from Leonard Ravenhill, and it was just fantastic. You know, I'd rather have a, a church of 10 people who just loved God and were just laid down to him than a church of a 
thousands that were just there for a show. Yeah. Like, you know, like that's so, so true. We get so, we can easily get caught up in numbers and how many people are, are watching what I'm watching and how many people are, are, are following me and, and listening to what I'm saying. But it's like, you know, like, it, it doesn't really matter. matter. Numbers don't matter. You know, if you look at Gideon, numbers don't matter. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yep. numbers do it's not It's kind of like uh, even even looking at like a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego where two or three are gathered in my name. Literally, there mm-hmm. I am in the midst of, of, of them, you know. And uh, coming together with someone, it always stuck out to me. There's a scripture in the Old Testament. I believe it's Proverbs, but it says like, Whenever you have victory in your life, when you have a friend, when you have people with you, you can glory together with them. Like I I like celebrate a lot of successes Mm -hmm. by myself or with my family. But it's different when I have that 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 brother. I was like, yeah, we did it together or Mm -hmm. we can glory together. And it it makes it so much different, different. Um, I've been in a weird place over the years because I I used to do a lot of gospel rap ministry and um, I would do shows and, and, and certain ministers would call me out and say, man, you're you got the anointing on you, bro. And you got all these people on stage. They don't have what you have. And like, I feel like they're mucking up the water. They're just trying to take the limelight. It's like, you need to be up here doing your thing and you minister. And I, I knew what they were talking about. Right. I'm coaching people on mm-hmm. how to be a good rapper and how to minister and stuff. But like, um, but I got the glory with them. You know, it made it more fun to have all these other yeah. people on stage with me. And it was something that over the years that they would always tell, you know, different people would come to me and say, man, you got, you know, you, it's it messing it up with all these people and wanting to have a crowd. But it's like, I, I understand, but I like to have the crowd. Like I love the, my brothers cause glory and by yourself isn't as fun. And you don't have to have all those people, you know, just have somebody who, who you can celebrate with and, you know, and brag, you know, about what's going on in your life that what God's doing, you know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. and see, see God well, doing that in, in their life too, you know? Well, and the, the thing is everybody brings, like we were talking about, everybody brings a different part. So everyone's like, Oh, you got the anointing, you got this. And I'm like, but they have Jesus in them too, just yeah. as much as I do. So can you see the value that Jesus has put in me for them? Or can't you? Because it's not a one man show. Yeah. You know, yeah, and no, that's the truth. I tell you what, I mean, I think the body of Christ, I think that, and I hate to equate this to business, but, or I, I say I equate it to business, but let's equate it to a marriage more, more. It works in both, but you got to find somebody who's good at what you suck at. You know, we have this thing of like, like <laughs> attracting like, like I want, I want the, I want the spouse. I want the friends that like everything that I like. And we find out we have like yes men in our corner and they're just like carbon copies of us. And we're all mm-hmm. doing the same thing. And we still need the person who can do what we can't do. Like I need, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? That's why like my wife is like my other half. She handles things that I can't handle. I'll be, if mm-hmm. I had to like, you know, be over certain things and homework and bills and some of those things, I'm lost, man. She's really good at it. And so we kind of complement each other. So I think ministry, you know, the fivefold that you prophet, preacher, teacher, evangelist, somebody knows when we all get together, somebody can feel what God's wanting to do. Someone else can articulate it. Mm-hmm. Someone else has that song, like you said. Someone else has the gift gift of healing and kind of being led of the spirit. Those are the, the most powerful either church meetings or home meetings that you can be a part of when people are together in unity and everyone hears and we respond effectively like where God wants to take us as a group. Like those are the most exactly. powerful experiences that you never forget, you know? Yeah, it, exactly. And that's, that's one of the things that like we all hear like, Oh, the church needs to move into that and, and everything. But we then have to be willing to do that. And we have to be willing to stay and uh, fight for that. You know, like our, our ministry, the ministry that I'm a part of, we, we have gone through very difficult things and you know, we've had to fight to stay united and we've had to stand and stay united. And, um, you know, we've had to lay down our own thoughts, our own opinions, our own everything. Like we've had to 
genuinely walk through the fire together and um you know fight to to keep anything from separating us because honestly i truly i truly believe the biggest fight that the church faces is unification and that's why like i i really do believe like that is a greater that is a greater work um you know we we still have yet to do it and it's been 2000 plus years like come on it's like, weird. let's get it together I've, but i've been talking to uh to people especially with the elections and stuff coming up and this is just my own thing it's like i liken it not to get too political but i liken it to <laughs> to, to capitalism <laughs> And how capitalism is like definitely in the church, right? There's been a thing, especially with like, of definitely ministers like demonizing other ministers. Stay away from him, you know, and all uh, of these things. And because uh, they believe, again, he believes in fasting or he believes in speaking in tongues or whatever it is. So even within the fringes of Christianity, some of the signs and wonders people, some of the people who believe God for the far out stuff of traveling in the spirit and you would think that there would be a commonality among the friends who are kind of like the rejects of like the big mainstream Christianity. But even them there, I'm trying to like walk in <sighs> unity with these people and they're like mm -hmm. fighting and scratching and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, man, I liken that to capitalism because like we're fighting for tithers. We're fighting for, do you know what I'm saying? Donations we're fighting. And so Instead of like glorying in someone else's ministry or say, hey, man, go check him out. What he's, he's really hearing the father's voice are like, no, no, no. Come and eat from me. Stay yeah. here. And I've seen that even in ministry, man, about yeah. walking together. And it breaks my heart. And I know it breaks the father's heart. Right. Um, but it's definitely totally this like does. having a corner on the market because, you know, it takes money. It takes, you know, so but a lot of it's done out of hurt, out, out of fear, rejection. Fear, you know, fear that you're going to lose followers and all of this stuff. So I can't even mention your name. I can't have you on the podcast and interview you because people are going to, man, that's been something that I've dealt with even opening up to mm -hmm. people and then having them lash out at me because I believe something different or whatever. It's just been crazy. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's a very sad thing and it truly does. Like, I can't tell you how many times I have felt the sorrow of Jesus. You know, I'm, I'm going to, oh, sorry. Oh, um, just something that was extremely, um, like just <laughs> that Jesus really broke my heart over just like, I think it was last week or maybe two weeks ago. Um, I was, I was in a fantastic mood all day. I was doing great. I had my coffee that morning. I was like cruising, you know, it was later in the day and, um, all of a sudden it's like just this, like this sorrow from Jesus just hit me in the gut. Mm. Like literally I physically felt like this, like this, just like something punched me as yeah. hard as it could yeah. in the gut. And it was truly, um, you know, a friend of mine was in this country that has like had the, the, the suicide rate is like the 14th in the world. And um, they were at this mall and they were up on the fourth level and they were taking some pictures and then they were coming back down elevator, escalator, something. And all of a sudden they hear all this screaming. They look to where the screaming was coming from. And there was a young man that had fallen to his death from the fourth floor. Mm. And they had realized that that man was in their pictures. And I, I didn't really think too much about it. I just read it and was like, oh, wow, I'm so sorry they experienced that. But then this sorrow hit me and Jesus was like, because my church will not unite as one in love. This continues to happen. And I bawled my head off. We want to know why all of these things happen in the world and, and why all this stuff, why there's all of these, these horrible calamities, these, these tragic people killing themselves, all of these things people feeling that they're not loved, people continually addicted on drugs, humongous homelessness problems. Look at the church. We are meant to be the ones that love and that shine forth the love and the compassion of Jesus to them. And one of the greatest ways we can do that is by showing them how to be united in love. That's the greatest sign of wonder. Like, honestly, 
nobody wants to come to the church because we fight and we bicker. I can't tell you how many people that I know that are atheists and lost and, and, and don't, don't want to be a part of the church. Or maybe like, like my brother, I truly believe my brother knows God and loves Jesus. He hates religion and he hates the church because all he sees is them just fighting for, 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 for money, for, for doctrine, for whatever. They're so divided. Nobody wants to be a part of that. Nobody. Like I do because I love the church and I see great. <laughs> no, but you don't want to be a part of me. that, that church. But like, like that I want to be a part of it to unite them together. Yeah. You know, I want to be one that brings the unity. You know, everybody's talking about that big word reformation. Oh, that's, that's the next thing that God's doing. La, 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 la. Well, if you're not, refer- if you're not reforming your own thoughts, to see everybody included in the body of Christ and everybody is one, then I would question the reformation that you're bringing forth. Yep. I'm with you a hundred percent. That's it. Um, everyone in chat. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions for Alicia. I'll try to translate them over before she goes here. Then the next few minutes, uh, ask your questions. Um, Again, like we're talking about the new things that God is doing, doing a new thing. And we've been hearing that. We've seen, we've let prophets get away with that for years. God is doing a new thing. And it's like, hold on. We don't even understand what he's doing now or what he did back then. Like we get to just kind of make up these new things. God is going to do this. Hold on. I'm with you. Okay. You're hearing, you're seeing things, but what is he? We got to, I don't want nothing new. I want to be able to do what he already told me to do first. Like, how am I not doing that? But we just get to get something new. I don't want that. Yeah. Give me something different, Lord. What are you saying now? You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. hold on. This is, you know, so being, we, we have to, and that's the balance thing about greater things, right? There's greater things. There's new things. There's old wine, but it's in new wine skins, which is true. But, but again, like we've already been given like everything we need. Again, Jesus operated in the supernatural disciples, prophets, uh, apostles, they were doing so many far out supernatural stuff, which, which are awesome, but having the power of the gospel to transform lives, man, like what more do we do we need? And if you're not doing that, yeah. you're not going to do nothing with all the, the new stuff anyway, you know? So it's like, man, I'm, I want a revival, man. I don't want a, I don't want a revolution. I want a revival. I need, a, a re, I need the scripture says to return to the ancient path, man. I want what they had. Like I want to stand yeah. in the doorway or stand in the way and knock and ask and return to the, the ancient path. And, and I want what they had. I don't want nothing more or nothing less, but if that's my well, standard, know, I think I'm in good company, you know? Yeah. Well, and the funny thing is when I, when I hear ancient path, I always think of who is the ancient one. That's good. The ancient of days. Jesus. So who truly is the ancient way? Jesus. Because he was the one that was slain, the foundations of the world. He's the ancient pathway. It's Jesus. It's union with him who then therefore opens up everything. Yeah, they were uh, they, they, they were close, man. They had something that we don't have, especially in Western mm-hmm. Christianity, man. We're striving to get back yeah. to it. Um, th- there, there are some questions here, and, and this is a question from Phoenix, and I- I'll answer this question too. It says question for truth, but I'll answer it too. But since you only have a few minutes, I'm going to uh, ask it to you. Go for it, uh, yeah. uh, Phoenix One Rose says, how do we raise our frequency or unlock our gifts from God? To me, and how he's taught me was focusing on him and worshiping him, because truly the gifts come from him. So who better to unlock them than him and (laughs) like you know it's like it's like for me how do we raise our frequency again who is the one that has the highest frequency jesus so for me who would i want my frequency to be raised by jesus you know um so for me to be raised by michael (laughs) no angel michael (laughs) no um yeah i mean like i know a lot of people are like well there's essential oils there's this there's that but like you know this is kind of controversial but again this is what jesus has shown me Uh you know that's kind of what the angels were showing them and you know if you read in the the old testament even the book of enoch the angels came down and showed them all the watchers came down Mm -hmm. to show them all these things and how to la 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 la. Mm. so yeah i can use essential oils and all those things yeah or i can just go jesus how about both together we have you combining them 
I mean, the incense yeah, and, I do, and the, I do, I use essential oils. I love them. Yeah, I, in, but, you, you know, know I, incense, I, the I Old Testament. Jesus, so, they would, yeah, exactly. That's the way to do it. Yeah. Spend time with him, and uh, yeah, I, I like to, I like to have and the aroma. You know what I'm saying? I like to. And I don't mind the essential oils, but I always, I, I always try to very carefully point back to Jesus. You know, people. I love, I love rocks. I love crystals. I love them, but for me, it's all about Jesus, and so. I, I always look back to him. And for me, it's just, it's worship, but it's not like there's different kinds of worship. It's not the declaring worship. It's not the, um, lovey. I mean, I love lovey dovey. Oh my gosh. Lovey dovey love. Um, but when it's just true, like exaltation, like like just exalting him, like he, he, there's just something that happens in worship that just draws you so close to him. And then really unlocking your gifting, really, it's just, it's just, (laughs) it's just walking it out. Like, it's just walking with him every day, talking with him. Okay, Jesus, like, my friend's talking with me about this. What do you want to say to them? um, It starts opening up. I've had to kind of be a little bit, a little bit vocal um, about a difference because I'm hearing it. I don't know if you've been in any of these circles especially the spiritual circles, the spiritual friends, they there's a or new yep. age or whatever, but they'll say that uh, <clears throat> we talk about Christ. Sometimes instead of saying Jesus, we'll say Christ or whatever. Um, but they'll kind of sit, they'll, they'll talk about Jesus being apart from the Christ. Like there is the Christ and then there's Jesus who was a prophet or a good man. And they try to identify that the spirit of the Christ, <clears throat> which we all can be, we all can tap into. Have you, have you heard that? And what's the difference between that to you or is there a Christ without Jesus Christ? <laughs> no, <laughs> there is no Christ without Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's his last you name. Know. Come on. <laughs> um, yeah. Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ, like yeah. Yeshua. Oh gosh. I hear that too. Oh, it's Yeshua HaMashiach or it's Yahua. I mean, yeah. I, I'm in, I'm a native English speaker. So I, I say the name of Jesus, um, you know, like if I was Israel, uh, if I was an um, Israelite or Hebrew yeah. or whatever, I'd say it. You you're know, Chinese, you'll say something else. All, Heck, if you was if yeah. you was um, an Israeli or someone who is uh, speaking Aramaic, you'll say Allah. Speaking yeah. Because Allah and, means God. Like, yeah. It's their language. Exactly. It's, it means the same thing. And, and here, here's the thing. Scripture says that in him dwelled the Godhead. In Jesus it didn't say in Christ dwelled the Godhead in him, Jesus, the, the, the man who was fully God and fully man. So we cannot take away like Christ from Jesus because he was both. And really when they're saying, oh, the Christ spirit, they're really, they don't realize that they're talking about Holy Spirit, you know? So that's, that's what I good. mean. Like, like they, they, they see these things, but they have no knowledge and no, no understand, no true understanding of them. And so they start mislabeling them because they're going in the spirit without Holy Spirit and without Jesus, you know? And so they're reaching out into different things that are not meant to be reached out into. So they have some understanding and some knowledge, but uh, any knowledge that is outside of Jesus Christ will lead you off, period. I don't care what anybody says. Any knowledge that is gained outside of Jesus Christ will lead you astray and it will lead you to another spirit. And I see it again and again. And this whole entire Christ spirit is totally a different spirit that mm. is completely causing complete disarray and havoc for many Christians who are spiritual because they're going off into the spirit and they're gaining knowledge, which puffs up. Then therefore, if you are puffed up in pride, then therefore Jesus, like Jesus will, you know, he will be far away because he, he comes to the humble and the lowly in heart. Correct. That's scripture. So if you are now puffed up in all this yeah. knowledge that you think you have, it's no bueno. It is like not good. And it will truly lead you to another spirit. And it is, it is a spirit that it's basically like a demon God and it wants you to worship it and it wants to be like God. Have you Kinda ever, like have you, the, have you had firsthand experience? Have you like got I've into any it, other yes. books? Well, I know you've seen it in others, but have you got into, like, up. have you got into things that tried to like bring you outside of Christ or new revelations? God did or did not let me understand it. Or Jesus is a space, read. space brother, <laughs> you know? <laughs> 
I've had things that have tried to lead me astray, but I always am, whenever I go in the spirit, I always look for Jesus. And if I am, I look, and I know some people are like, well, you know, Jesus is in everything. This is true. But there is a humility in the fact for me that protects me. And I, so anytime I go in the spirit, I look for Jesus and Jesus, are you leading me to that? Or are you not? Yep. Because I only want to see what Jesus wants to show me. And I only want to know what he wants to me to know. And I only want him to reveal what he wants to reveal to me, but, not anything else. And if there's an angel, what happens, I'm asking those angels. Exactly. Like, but but when, when you do that, what happens? It's not like you sell in for lesser because I got to ask Jesus. What happens exactly. when you go through that gate? He shows me everything. So, like, I have seen so many amazing, amazing things. Like, it's more than what I could honestly ever fathom or put into words most of the time. It's, it's, I get so much more and I get so much of him. And, like, I, I would not ever want to follow any of those things. One time I went up, I, I, when I was in a really intense encounter and um, God showed me this place. And at first it looked amazingly beautiful. First I, I went up in this big, huge, it was like a ray of light. If I could say that. And um, it was me and Jesus, me and Jesus were like one. And we were like this big, huge uh, light. And it was as if we were going up into the atmosphere and into different, different realms and dimensions that were in the area that I was in. And I got up into this one area and it seemed like it was like really high up in the spirit. You know, it really, you know, it seemed like it. And this light, you know, I got to this place and it looked beautiful. It looked light. It looked like, like almost like a place in heaven that I had seen before. But then this light started shining out on it. The light that me of, that was me and Jesus as one me and him as one when we were united that light started shining out and all of a sudden these things that looked so beautiful they looked like angels it literally it looked like heaven had i not been one with jesus in this encounter i probably quite possibly would have been um deceived to be honest it looked so beautiful it looked so amazing it even felt everything almost to every single part of my discernment it felt like spot on almost and as that light of me and my and Jesus's union and oneness started to go and shine forth, these things started to turn into the most hideous creatures I had ever seen. They were disgusting. They were scary. And it was like not light, but they were deceiving as if they were angels of light. And so that's why I say it's like I, I don't go anywhere without Jesus anywhere okay. because, man. Those things would have deceived me like that. And then when I tried to, in the past, um, read things, I praise God for my upbringing in the church, because when I tried to read things that were outside of him, I couldn't understand it. I was so mad. I was like, I just want to, and I knew, I knew it was Jesus. I knew it was like, nope. I was mm-hmm. so mad because I was mad at him at the time. Yep. <laughs> me I, um... and Jesus have a very real relationship. And so I was trying to understand other things. This was years and years ago, and he wouldn't let me. Yeah, that's good. So, good for you. Yeah, I'm gonna pray really quick because I do have to um, yeah, run back me, into work. Yeah, let me uh, let, let me read this comment okay. just so you kind yes. of be directed on how to pray. This I felt the Holy Spirit when I read this comment. So, going off of what you just said, what I've been talking about even before you came, it just kind of lines up. Uh, Phoenix Rose says, "I was chasing chasing after power and enlightenment without Jesus, and literally lost my mind. Had to go to a hospital mm-hmm. and suffered mental." illness so people who are there's a lot of people there they're listening yeah let's pray so yeah so jesus hmm, i just thank you right now for revealing your truth and who you are to each and every single person i thank you that you are the way the truth and the life and i ask right now in jesus name that every single spirit that has deceived and has tried to come into your children that are listening to this broadcast and will listen to this broadcast right now would be revealed in Jesus name. I thank you Lord for giving them the wisdom to test each and every single spirit and if they do not say that you are the Christ that you came in the flesh that they would flee and they would
would flee quickly. I ask right now in Jesus' name that your peace would fall upon each and every single person as they turn in repentance back to you, their first love. Yeah, I just thank you for that in Jesus' name. And I ask that you would go forth right now with your peace, with your wisdom. Yeah, and just fall upon each and every single one of your children. I thank you for bringing deliverance and clarity of mind. And I thank you, God, that you will settle them in a place that you have for them and they would stand and fight, that they would stand on your word and that when you lead them to that place, that church or that body or that tribe, that they would stay and they would not leave no matter what comes their way. And that then therefore they would be able to reap the benefit of the fruits of the spirit in maturity as they grow in your body. Ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Alicia, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I really You're enjoyed welcome. it. You're welcome. We have to do it again. Yeah, me too. Thank you, my friend. Have a great have a day. If, if people want to follow you, where's the best place to do it? Place to do it? Um, just Alicia Turnock on Facebook. Um, request me. And then also, please follow um, the ministry that I'm a part of. It's called The Spirit and the Bride Kingdom Coalition. And um, yeah, we're we're a fun little group of mystics and some of them evangelical and across the body of christ because you know again we're all one <laughs> so awesome yeah. right, I'll, put a, have I'll, a put, day. I'll put a link in the description thank you for hanging out with me many You're blessings welcome. friend peace you peace alicia turnick ladies and gentlemen turnock good stuff man funny thing is a lot of um things that we talked about I talked about talked about before she came on. Another funny thing is there's a lot of things that are going on in the chat as I'm reading the chat here uh, during stream is that a lot of things people are saying. I've read stuff in the scriptures I've been reading today and people are talking about it. It's all these synchronicities, man. Everything lines up for me um, when she talks about going through Jesus, right, and going through Christ to have these experiences and to um, any of this stuff has to be done. There's a, a a contract or a covenant that I signed that a friend of mine put out. He's trying to do this like unity thing, right? Um, anybody involved with their ministry and then really just the church at large. Um, Kingdom Equipping Center. This is Gil Hodges and Adina. They put out um, this covenant of love and unity. And I, I signed it because I believe in these. And they call it the three plumb lines for everyone to agree on. And it says, by Yahweh's grace, I, Derek Grosskirth, choose to enter into this covenant of love and unity with the followers of Yeshua to unite together in his body under these three plumb lines. Number one being the cross of Yeshua. Um, number two, honor, love, and respect to all people. Uh, and three, to ask the Father. Uh, that and they're, they're all big. And it says, I will do my part to unify and not to divide the body of Yeshua. Signed this day. I dated it. 5-22-19. Derek Grosskirth. Um, the cross of Christ, the cross of Yeshua <clears throat> is the plumb line that we're connected. Honor, love, and respect for everyone. Everyone deserves that, even if we disagree. Uh, and then ask the Father. Whether it's something that somebody brings to the table that you don't believe something that you don't uh, agree with or anything like that um ask the father and i thought it was interesting because for me it, it really taps into the spirit realm i've seen so much stuff in the spirit angels demons spirits and the sovereignty of god like all of these like i've seen so much like i can go on for days i wrote a book about it right um but all of it all of the beautiful things, I'll say this, <laughs> has come through the third plumb line here, which is ask the father. Like, let me ask God. So it's never for me to like engage with the angelic to see the angels outside of the atmosphere, any of that stuff um, on my own. It's always bringing it to the father. Ask the father, father, if it's your will. If it's out there, can I see it? And the Father lets me do it. In prayer, in deep meditation, I go through, guided by the Holy Spirit, spending time with my Father, the one who made all of this stuff. He made those dimensions. He made those realms. He made those angels. He made those demons. Everything is created by Him. 
through Christ, allow me to experience it if it's your will. I never go to any of these things outside of the will of the Father. Um, why? There's already two or three comments that I've already said where people have tapped into the occult and lost their mind. They've lost their mind from seeking after the occult. Uh, the, the Bible in the, uh, Acts chapter 19 calls it the curious arts. They make up these things to trick you. They make up things to make packs with demons or to summon spirits and all of these things that are going outside of the will of God. Now, we're not, we're not even talking about tapping into any of the prophetic supernatural in God. We're talking about doing the stuff outside of God, which gets into what we know today as the occult. Or, or witchcraft, if you will. And seeking after that stuff, people are losing their mind. I've done it. I did it. And if I, in, you know, you can keep tapping into it and keep losing your mind. Being double-minded. Um, when I got into it back in my, when I was a teenager, man, I was out of it, man. I was losing my mind spirits were talking to me i couldn't control it right i couldn't shut the doors i couldn't i couldn't i had no say so about who or what came through once those doors were open so i can attest some people are talking about they've lost their mind they have had to go to the hospital uh, someone else says here um talking about um um just lo again losing their mind <sighs> I wasn't I don't want to really get into this maybe I'll just flirt with the idea of what I'm going to do I want to I want to do it justice but I've been talking to an individual um I did a podcast on it like this uh, occultic uh spiritual show they get into the esoteric and all that and I go I got on there and just talked about Jesus for three hours and my experiences and um somebody hit me up and uh they were talking about uh, a phenomenon known as T.I targeted individuals um, people who believe that the government is watching them uh, to an extent over and beyond to where the government is sending their thoughts the weird thing about this because there's some truth to this right the stuff that you take in through the television the stuff that you Google, like all that stuff's being recorded. So yeah, you're, you're, you're being watched on some extent, but not to the far as the fact that they're shooting laser beams to your head from a van outside of your house. You know, that black helicopters are uh, following you around town and all of this stuff. And, and I had a guy hit me up and he just, he's really into it. The targeted individual phenomena that they're putting implants in you and all of this crazy stuff. But a lot of that stuff comes along with opening your mind to occult material outside of Christ. Outside of Christ. Opening up yourself to it. Schizophrenia. Being targeted. You are targeted by demons. You can be targeted by angels. You're opening up these doors, man. Vans, helicopters, what does it liken to? So occult material opens you up to that stuff. I'm just going to be honest with you. What else opens you up? Drug use. S especially when it comes to pharmacia, uh, mixing and creating uh, bath salts, methamphetamines, like mixing all of this stuff up and using it. So some of the things people talk about on meth binges, hearing voices, cops hiding under the bed. Cops hiding in the, the, the DEA is in my closet right now. At any moment, they're going to kick the door in. I mean, these are some of the things that meth addicts deal with. Talking about cops being up in the trees, watching them with sniper rifles, scared to go outside because a, a cop is going to shoot them with a sniper rifle in their tree because they're shot out on meth. This is some of the hysteria, the schizophrenia, the paranoia that comes with that. All of this drug use. I was talking to a friend of mine earlier about this, and he was, he's when he was doing a lot of meth, going on binges. He said every every vehicle he that came by, he thought was a surveillance crew in it. He thought that the mail lady was watching him for the cops. Like all of these weird things that are going on in your head, 
schizophrenia, drug use, the occult. One, one friend of mine, it's the material that you're taking in. One guy, would he watched the, the Truman Show. Y'all remember the Truman Show with uh, Jim Carrey? And there was cameras everywhere watching him. Maybe you don't remember. But I got a friend of mine, he was uh, trying to come off of drugs. And he was still going through the process of renewing his mind. But he watched it. He said he had to turn it off. Him watching that and and being involved with drug use opened up a door, a portal, a gateway in his mind that he thought that now he was on the Truman Show. That there were cam- cameras all through his house watching him and that people, whether it was the government or was watching every move that he did and testing him, whether it was the government or whether it was a, a reality television show. He thought his life was, he had to turn it off. There's a spirit behind that. spirit behind it yeah open yourself up to those spirits when you align with that spirit with that frequency with that vibration that's that's who you're going to see on the other side whether you're doing ungodly acts or ungodly deeds putting drugs in your body all this kind of stuff you're going to deal with that kind of stuff so i think i want to do just a, a a a real deep video on this but there's a lot of people who believe that they're targeted and trust me i get you guys know i talk about this i mean i've i got people who think that they're you know reincarnated from a past life and there's all of these crazy hysterical things that is that are demonic in nature um and they're acting on it because they believe it to be truth gang stalking and the government is outside their window every night sending thoughts to them that is demonic you're dealing with any of this stuff my friend alicia just prayed for you i'm going to pray as well um just ask god to bless you just uh, abundantly above any measure uh, with a peace that surpasses all understanding um the bible says that to put your trust in the lord it says also to forget not his benefits one of his benefits is that he gives power love and a sound mind a sound mind, being able to sit with yourself, sit with your thoughts. You got to address it. We talk about, I told you, I leave nothing off, no stone, no stone unturned. We talk about it all. We're going to talk about this. Father, those who are struggling with their mind, their mind has become their enemy. Father, I just pray peace upon them right now in Jesus' name. Jesus' mighty name, God, heal them, Lord. Send your spirit, Father. Let them know that you are real. Whatever it is in their hearts, I think he's showing you already right now some things. It's a book that you got in your house. You got to get rid of it. You can't have it. It's a statue, T-shirt, music, entertaining these things. He's showing you what it is. You got to get rid of it. Peace right now, Lord, that they'll want peace more than they'll want what they currently have, that they'll want rest more than they want what they currently have. Get rid of it right now. In Jesus' name. I believe in blessed objects. I believe that uh, there's certain uh, beautiful, positive energies and angelic forces and, and things that uh, l- lift your vibration, lift your countenance. And there's the cursed objects as well, things that fallen spirits and demonic entities hang around. Get rid of it right now. Whatever it is, if he shows it to you, don't hesitate. Don't question it. Get rid of it. Whatever it is, in Jesus' mighty name, peace be upon you. Man, thank you guys for hanging out with me. I uh, really appreciate this. Um, for those of you who want to give to the Homeless Project, the Homeless video that we're doing, um, make sure you, you give. You can go to truthseeker.com and you can give there. We're um, about halfway towards the goal. And uh, thank you guys for, for believing in the work and everything that we're doing. I'm excited for what's ahead. And uh, man, hang out with us. Join our Discord community. Y'all want to uh, hang out after the podcast. If you have questions, concern, or you need some more prayer, whatever it is, I want to make sure that I'm here for you. We have a Discord community. The link is in the description. You can join and get access to the community, what we're doing. There's a lot of people out there just like you. They love you. You're not by yourself. And uh, they want to pray with you, man. So that's what it is. So the next live feed is going to be Thursday at uh, 10 a.m. Central. Um, but if, like I said, if you're looking for a community, man, we're, we'll be... This is where we do life at on our Discord community. We use, take advantage of it. And then our Thursday night, School of the Mystics as well, which is our hangout. 
prayer activation circles as well. So make sure you check it out. With that, I'm going to say peace and shalom. Thank you guys for hanging out. Peace, peace. Well, that does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.